Cancelled and tasteless YouTuber Shane Dawson has once again uploaded a video to his main channel called The Lawsuit of Shane Dawson. A very clickable headline that we later find out means nothing since there is in fact no lawsuit. Just Shane's baggy, fully zipped tracksuit that he took home from the Squid Games. An equally misleading title for this video would have been a nice thing to sit and watch for 40 minutes that isn't boring. Because in reality, it's a dreadful thing to sit and watch, featuring endless conversations conversations that never go anywhere, an announcement for Shane's podcast that already feels low effort, and the exhausting sense of humor of a creator who thinks that every uninteresting little video he farts out is worthy of being built up by teasers and trailers like it's a new Conjuring movie. So grab your crucifix and get ready for a pizza blasted nightmare in another Shane Dawson flavored installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Cerebral, who I've partnered with because mental health issues affect roughly 50% of the population. But barriers like high costs, inconvenience, and fear of stigma can prevent people from getting the professional help they deserve. Cerebral is a mental health subscription that provides clients with ongoing, comprehensive access to online care and medication management for anxiety, depression, insomnia, and ADHD in certain states for one flat monthly rate. Cerebral Cerebral's mission is to improve access to high quality mental health care, which is something I can absolutely get behind. Cerebral will provide clients with evidence-based therapeutic techniques and medication management when necessary. Because Cerebral operates on a telehealth system, that means you can schedule appointments with your therapist or counselor or provider whenever it's convenient for you. Cerebral is not a crisis hotline and it wouldn't be a good fit for every condition or circumstance, but in many cases, Cerebral is a great fit because over 95% of subscribers are able to see a provider within three days and rather than spending $500 plus to see a therapist Cerebral offers very affordable plan options. 82% of patients reported reduced anxiety in 60 days and Cerebral clinicians are rated 4.9 out of 5 stars by their patients. I love working with a therapist and I would not be where I am without having access to quality mental health care. Click the link down in the description to get started with Cerebral and access quality mental health Health treatment today for as low as $30 for your first month. Now let's get into the video. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content here on the web. And we cut it into little clips like a Chuck E. Cheese pizza to say, are these normal food like everyone knows or is this worth making a whole video about? The way that this Shane Dawson upload devolved into them just looking at pizzas by the end of it. I'm baffled that this is making it to number four on YouTube's trending page. And looking at the comments of this video, it seems like they're fully grown adults and still find this interesting. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. So turn on notifications if you'll always wanna be the first to know when I'm slicing up a fresh hot pizza for you. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon. I had not high hopes for this video from the minute Shane started teasing it on his community page saying, oh, I was shooting something so dumb in my kitchen today. It's like, <clears throat> if you already think it's dumb, delete the footage, just saying. Like, don't brag about shooting something dumb when you haven't posted something not dumb since ever. I don't think you have ever posted anything not dumb. So like, just aim for something good to, to mix it up anyway right off the bat with this video. It's more of that sort of undermining his own work, qualifying his own presentation, you know? I believe that we are in a mass group simulation. You have to kind of just accept that as fact. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even want that other thing you just showed us. So we're already off to a bad start no matter how I look at it. I suppose I'll be interested to see what new angle Shane thinks he can bring to the simulation theory. I'm guessing it will be a lot of, so you mean this is all a simulation and I'm not actually canceled? <gasps> 
no baby, it means that your sense of humor doesn't even work for people with artificial intelligence. I love how Shane is showing us this teaser just to prove that he's also working on something his fans actually requested. Like, why not just finish making that video already? Because it's gonna be four scores and seven years long? It's not the Planet Earth documentary you're making here, Shane. It's a YouTube video using stock footage B-roll where you talk to this guy who probably uses Reddit. I can almost guarantee that this conspiracy video won't seem like it took a significantly greater amount of work than whatever it is we're gonna be watching by the next 40 minutes. I don't know sometimes why Shane takes so long to work on his videos, but then I watch like vlogs like this and I'm like, oh, it's because he's not fucking working on them ever. He's driving around town, shopping for big tacky furniture. I don't know, like maybe he would get better at making videos if he bothered to do it a little more. Anyway, he pulls up to Chris and he's in this truck. Hi guys, it's been so long. I have so much to say at the moment. Can I call you Christopher Robin? Please. <laughs> People call me that in elementary school. Did you have a fat friend that you called Poo? <laughs> I wish. Uh, now you do. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, new you, new me. We're not talking bad about ourselves, guys. No, we're not. It's literally just you, and you literally can't stop yourself. I know that it takes daily practice to stop negative self-talk, but for Shane, I think it will also take improv classes, because I'm 99% sure that every attempt he makes at humor for the rest of this hour is some sort of comment about his body or cancellation. I'm not sure why some of Shane's fans think he's so enlightened because he bullies himself and then says, just kidding afterwards. I'm guessing it's because maybe they also have the emotional intelligence of Eeyore. See, I'm part of the Winnie the Pooh joke that's so hilarious and worth putting on screen. Okay, that's enough fun. Back to this video. So far we know that um, Shane Dawson hates himself and if you like Shane Dawson, you probably hate yourself too. Great, I'm just kidding. I don't mean to make a judgment about people who like Shane Dawson's content, but I seriously question the general level of taste of YouTube viewers and the general like level of tolerance that these audiences have for someone who is really problematic or has been in the past and hasn't made any work worth redeeming that problematic behavior since. People just wanna pretend like these videos are good and that they can somehow forgive his racist and transphobic comments in the past. Could never be me, will never. So Shane basically admits he doesn't know what he's having them film here. He has so much he wants to explain to people, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Ryland is complaining because they got engaged in 2019 and they still aren't married. So there's like that kind of fun dynamic right off the bat, all of these unsaid words. They're trying trying out some cookies randomly. Uh, I just feel like they always make such lame jokes. Like if I were with my friends and they made some of these jokes, I would be like, <laughs> not like, <laughs> like, come on. It's banter at best. I love banana cream anything. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing the straight audience. <laughs> Actually, I think straight audiences are the only ones still laughing at these painfully obvious and juvenile sexual innuendos that you somehow felt were worthy of including in this already too long video. That wasn't even as funny as the jokes that I cut out of my own videos for not being funny enough. And I laugh at almost everything I say. I'm almost sure that Shane's audiences are majority straight, propping him up with their views. Because any gay person I know who would watch this would be like, why don't you all three just shut the f up, eat your goddamn cookie, and turn the camera on once you think of something interesting to record. Also, I can't say I'm not just a little suspicious about this sudden crumble cookie comedy hour. I guess we have to assume this brand placement was completely organic. Uh, no, we're not married because I hate weddings, I hate suits. I'm like, what if I don't fit in my suit because of all the crumbles I ate? What about crumbles? Where does come from? Why, speak of the devil, the very cookies I mentioned by name and I'm sitting right next to them. Did we get a close up on the Instagram handle? I guess I could see how this might just really be a cookie place near Shane's house that all three of them really love at the moment. And if so, Crumble just lucked out with some free advertising worth probably $100,000. Maybe it would seem less suspicious if he wasn't making a point to say their name so much. Crumbles, crumbles, crumbles. crumbles. Try the crumble. Is it sponsored? Is it not sponsored? I suppose we'll never know and that's just 
just the way the cookie is. Side note, there's a store down the street from me that sells big doughy cookies like that. It seems to be the new thing popping up all over the country, like those frozen yogurt stores were a few years ago. And I am very okay with it. I walk right in there and I say, if you don't make me a fucking snickerdoodle the size of a couch cushion for me to put the full weight of my ass on, I'm gonna give this place a one-star Yelp review. So they go to the temporary office. Ugh, everything looks awful. They're back in LA, by the way. I don't know if Shane's moving back to LA. I don't care, but they still have this LA house. And at this point, they still are talking about it. Oh, and throughout the video, Shane has this kind of like sexual energy, like he's coming on to Chris. And it's not just me who notices it. People in the room also discuss it. <laughs> it's weird he always wants to <laughs> well, it's weird how obvious that dynamic is to you and to the millions of people watching from across the internet. You just stole my Hey! <laughs> POV, Shane is inviting you to be their third, but Ryland isn't cooperating. With both Chris and Shane's previous camera operator, Andrew, it almost felt like Shane had more chemistry with both of them than he did with his own fiance. Like Ryland is straight up going to be married to this man and they treat him sort of like he's the annoying little brother throughout this video. The classifier is a bear? Uh, a bear? I don't think so. Really? I don't know the classifications of gays. Like, I don't even know what I'm <laughs> this is the love of your life that you're talking to? Okay, okay. I guess there are all types of relationships. I would be like, um, so I understand if you feel the need to hate on yourself to be funny in these videos, but if you make one more joke at my expense on camera, I'm putting all of your insulin in the freezer. Shane is really desperate for Chris to say that Shane is not a bear. I'm like, I don't even see you as a sexual object whatsoever. So if that helps, you're more like a tube of cookie dough to me. Actually, no, I don't, I like cookie dough in my fridge a little more. You're a tube of Jimmy Dean sausage. Good morning. Be honest. I don't know. You see me at a club. I immediately pull the fire alarm and run through the emergency exit. Sorry, what was the original question? My brain went into fight or flight just from that hypothetical situation. Alrighty, so Shane and family all go out to the living room and Shane basically lets it be known that while they were driving from Colorado, Shane decided he's going to start up a podcast. Just a reminder, or for those who don't know, he had a podcast years ago called Shane and Friends, which is where a lot of troubling sound bites have surfaced from in the past with him saying really off color jokes involving children and animals, basically. So he's like, oh, I mean, now I wouldn't say anything cancelable on it. And it's like, are you even capable of making that call? Cause you don't seem to know when you're saying something cancelable. <laughs> anyway, I also don't want to know about your dream where he dreamed that Ryland had a vagina and like he had sex with Ryland's vagina and I'm like, this is all too much for YouTube. Like I'm reporting you to Child Protective Services and the child is my inner psyche. <laughs> I haven't touched one or ate one, but I like putting your mouth or putting your fingers in it seems like really strange. I'm the opposite. I've never had sex, but I've gone down. Wow. Yeah. And I, but, uh, <laughs> Why are they each talking about it like they all interacted with the same master vagina? Vagina, I said vagina. <laughs> They're talking about this vagina like it's the enemy in a Stephen King novel. I could also swear that we've covered other Shane Dawson videos where they've had this exact freshman in college conversation already. Even though I know I've never asked for a single detail on the sex lives of these three people. Keep it on the other end of the table, sir. Maybe it's like a, this is Shane's way of coming on to Chris as being like, yeah, I f a lady once. It's like, ooh, <laughs> are you Buffalo Bill? Isn't it crazy to think about me having sex with a woman? It's crazy for me to even think about where the genitals belong on a creature like you. So let's stop pushing it with this forced visualization you're guiding your camera guy through. Shane brags that he's friends with Lori from Shark Tank. I'm like, maybe. Oh, and he had a call with a psychic and he's like, I was testing the psychic the whole time. She's legit. And I'm like, you know what else is a really cool psychic? Proven behavioral techniques from therapists, but whatever. He says he has a therapist too, so. Anyway, this therapist he talked to while he had COVID and she was like, you should do a podcast. Uh, at the time I had COVID and my throat was really fucked up. I couldn't talk for like a week. And she was like, your throat is communication. And the spirits are telling me that you need to use that this year. And right now you're taking a rest. You're resting your throat and getting it ready. <laughs> 
<laughs> is this you using your spirit guided communication skills right now? Because you can't seem to even make it through a sentence. All the comments are like, oh, I love seeing Shane. He's so happy here. Yeah, too happy. He just lost it at the word throat. Someone would have to be full time thinking about sucking to make this many that's what she said timeouts. It feels like I'm driving eighth graders to soccer practice right now. To me, even this kind of comedy style feels really insecure to me. Like you can't even make it through a sentence that has an indirect sexual innuendo in it without stopping to make it, you know, the funniest part of what you're saying. Because I think Shane is worried. He doesn't have anything else that's naturally gonna come up that's funny. He has to like force this bombastic entertaining style style into every literal sentence that he says. God, I feel like I'm a fucking therapist watching these videos. It's really not fun. <laughs> that being said, I'm sure there are other people in different stages of their life journey who can really relate to where Shane is at right now. And I'm guessing those are the people who are most loudly celebrating all of his content. But I'm always just wondering how many of those people are also outside of the communities that he's offended in the past and therefore have the privilege of, you know, not worrying about all of that or forgiving him for that past behavior. It's like, well, yeah, it's not really a transgression that you have the right to forgive him for in that case. Oh, I saw on Reddit, I think, that Shane liked Chris Pratt's Instagram post about Jesus. I don't care if Shane likes Jesus. I don't trust anybody who likes Chris Pratt. No. A few years ago, we did a video where we went to Chuck E. Cheese. There was a rumor that their pizza is like left over from people that don't finish it, and then they just kind of keep it in the back, and then they shove it all together to make a pizza. And we got a pizza there, and it looked like exactly what the theory was. Or does it just look like a normal pizza that was sliced when it just got out of the oven and still mostly molten cheese and hot sauce? This, I remember, it all went down like in 2019. Shane made these videos about how Chuck E. Cheese recycled pizza slices and for some reason that's the video topic he chose to resurrect for this you know in 2022 i thought he would might get into trouble back when these videos were initially going out because he was basically sitting on camera and being like there's no doubt they are taking pre-eaten food and serving it to your children full of syphilis and disease and it's like what you're showing us is not proof of that they don't recycle their pizza i'm pretty sure i'm i am sure i'm not sure i don't know but i'm pretty sure i don't want to get sued again just a reminder you didn't actually even get sued the first time so not quite sure what the title of this video is referring to. Maybe it's about the lawsuit that I'm gonna hurl at you for looking directly in the camera and asking me to think about you having sex with a woman. Crime against humanity. Gavel. I think anybody who has ever worked in food service knows how ridiculous it sounds to suggest that a national pizza chain would recycle already eaten food just to save money on pizzas that probably cost the company 80 cents to make a piece. You'd have to have a child's mind to actually believe that Chuck E. Cheese employees go out and collect half-eaten pizzas and then bring them back to the kitchen where an employee matches up the pieces in a way that looks mostly like a regular fresh pizza. That process alone would take Chuck E. Cheese employee like 10 minutes to assemble one pizza. Why would they be paying someone to make six pizzas an hour when they could pay that person the same and it would cost them less to just be making dozens of pizzas every 10 minutes by starting over? So it's literally costing the company less to make fresh pizzas while also following health laws and removing the liability of them causing some sort of foodborne illness for their customers and getting caught making that a general practice for their business. It's annoying because Shane keeps saying that he's kidding about all of this, but then quickly implying that he's not in a way that the average viewer who is not reading this little disclaimer that he puts up is gonna think that he's being, you know, he's giving a side eye like, I don't really trust this place. He even ends the thing being like, I will never eat this, you know? Not that he has to, but it's, mm. all I'm saying is his little parody disclaimer might protect him legally, but it obviously hasn't cleared anything up for the people in the comments who are still like, oh no, I'll never eat there. Thanks, Shane. And I'm just like, why? Why is this your artistic movement, Shane? Like out of all of the things you say you want to do with your life and career, make horror movies, start this podcast. And why are you spending all this time talking about pizzas that you know is bullshit? Unless you're a 12 year old, you know this is bullshit. 
Why? Why? Because it did well on your channel in 2019 and you're trying to recapture the nostalgia people had for you back before the disgusting actions you made came to light? Like, stop. After I got canceled, and I did self-reflecting for a couple years, and I fixed it. Ah, uh, yes, he totally fixed everything. In fact, can we start scrolling across the screen a list of names for any of the black, indigenous, and people of color communities that Shane has paid reparations to? Go ahead, just start scrolling them. Oh, and add in the name of any trans ally groups that he's helped promote with his platform. Start scrolling the list, please. Oh, and include the names of any minority voices he's helped amplify using his content. Come on, the list, scroll the list. Why is the list not scrolling? Oh, I see what's happening. Well then, what exactly does Shane think he's done to fix anything? Sell his merch at 40% off for the last two years? Post and delete several apologies that all seem to miss the point? The only good thing Shane did with himself after the cancellation was move to a less populous area of the country, but now he's back in LA, so you couldn't even do that right, you baggy t-shirt with a brain. So I guess this is what we're doing. They order a pizza from Chucky cheese no they order three pizzas from Chuck E. Cheese and of course they have to like put on a bunch of clothing from the Jeffree Star series don't know so. it's all about growth baby <laughs> I love how this is how we dress for Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> I love how your video is literally just 40 minutes of you deciding to order a pizza and then go pick it up and the only way Shane can think to try to liven up such a boring and mundane series of events is to make everybody try on some clothes from his closet I feel like this whole experience would be literally Literally more interesting and like relaxing to watch if Shane wasn't trying so hard to push how naturally funny he can come off. Shane works so hard to get the laugh that I bet sometimes his eyeballs pop out of place like a French bulldog and Ryland has to push them back in using his thumbs. It's like, oh, don't worry, this just happens. He got overexcited trying to think of something clever to say, the use of the word kumquat. We should go to like Disneyland. I'll go to Disneyland. I like Disneyland because I'm not afraid I won't fit on the rides. Like, I want to have adventures. We should have adventures together. Okay, just don't make any videos about it because I'm not sure our tiny brains can handle an adventure more grand, mind-blowing, and life-altering than this sojourn to Chuck E. Cheese on Colorado Boulevard in Los Angeles to obtain the three large pizzas of legend. If Shane is done planning his next Disney trip, can he try getting to something exciting soon? Because I've eventually got to get back to my job making YouTube videos, which actually doesn't involve spending a whole afternoon doing nothing since I actually put effort into them. I can't believe it's taken them 30 minutes to get two pizzas like and the first 10 minutes was them Not even knowing that they wanted to get pizzas like I can't stand a YouTube video that starts with the person being like I'm trying to decide what to make today's video about it's like well delete it already then because you don't know turn it off Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm scared. Oh my god. Please, I'm scared. Even if you are scared of three large pizzas I need you to shut the f up about it right now because no one else even almost cares what's going on at this moment. What exactly is Shane scared of here? He really thinks he's gonna open that pizza box and it's gonna look like Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas? Expecting the Louis Vuitton patchwork bag of pepperoni? It's literally insulting how sensationalized and overproduced this is. Unless you're one of the thousands of people cheering him on like, yes, King, you better talk about that pizza for 30 minutes. We totally excuse your racism now. I'm tired of people telling me we should just all forgive Shane. Why? Because it's so important we take in this earth shattering content with an open mind? Like stop pushing to let Shane Dawson use the N word without repercussion just so you don't have guilty feelings while watching him and Ryland f around with a light in the car for 20 minutes. Ready? I'll take a wide angle with my phone so we can really Here, see I'll do it. it. All right. Okay. okay. Oh my God, I'm all right, Chucky, we believe in you. Okay. Why am I here we go? Every time Shane Dawson syncs up two camera angles, he suddenly thinks he is JJ Abrams shooting a spaceship crash. Did we really need the A and B cam and a hundred different cuts between them to show the outside of this box? I don't know, but whoever's holding that iPhone could have at least rubbed the haze of pizza grease off the lens with their t-shirt. The climax of the story, they open the pizza box. It's weird that there's gaps that 
Shane, if you don't stop fingering that pizza to make a point that doesn't exist, I'm going to scream and run into that nearby Bloomingdale's to shop for eye creams all afternoon because I deserve a treat. You three can wait here in the car with the windows rolled up until I get back. It's hard for me to perfectly verbalize why, but what he's pointing out right now looks like normal pizza behavior to me. You know, like you cut a pizza and the cheese bevels and puckers along the slice and therefore the toppings slide here and there. This is my Carrie Bradshaw moment. As I was sitting in my apartment trying to verbalize a certain type of pizza inertia that I began to wonder, has Shane Dawson never sliced a fucking pizza before in his life? I'm so sick of talking about it. But wh why? Why are they the only ones that are like this? <laughs> uh, it's like watching the Hardy Boys try to solve a mystery right after all three of them were in a bus accident. Have they even bothered to compare these pizzas to ones from other brands? Because I just checked Instagram for photos of pizzas from both Domino's and Pizza Hut and quickly found examples of the same thing happening a lot. Shane can't show any of that very basic element of the scientific method because it would undermine his entire kind of sensational attitude about what he's showing us here. Why is he even making this video again? He really has nothing new or interesting to say other than just recycling this concept from three years ago. At least focus your effort on the real enemy, which is 7-Eleven pizza, or as I like to call it, Italian style cardboard. Here's some more of Shane turning over a new leaf and not talking bad about himself anymore. You still have your um, odd shapes, but so do I. And you know, listen, you might look at my body and say, those legs don't match that torso. Oh my God, Shane, you look fine, okay? Can you please find some sort of confidence boosting activity so we can get through one sentence without you hating on your perfectly normal, healthfully functioning body? Because it's probably making a lot of other people feel less than grateful for their perfectly normal, healthy functioning bodies as well. I just feel like every time Shane says something negative about his weight or his size, he's also reinforcing that belief for somebody else who feels like they look similar to him or in some sort of a situation that feels the same. It's like, you're not helping anyone with this. You're just helping people feel worse about themselves. We like variety in our pizza slices. Mm. I like one slice to be pepperoni and then the other one to be cheese. You ordered half cheese and half pepperoni, you pizza fucker. That's it. I'm done explaining basic pie mechanics to somebody who obviously needs this absurd rumor to be true to make it feel like this video was somehow about more than him hitting on Chris, hating on Ryland, and plugging his new podcast, which now has its own Instagram account, letting us know just what level of quality we can hope to look forward to. As you can see, Shane had his logo designed by the BTK killer. He said he posted this screenshot of his note because he noticed it was taken at 111. Um, do you think magic clock numbers are somehow what makes a podcast good and not actual work? Because that would actually explain why a lot of your videos suck so much. <laughs> Counting to the spirit guides to make the videos good when you don't even know how to write a goddamn story. Fabulous. What do you guys think of this Shane Dawson return? I'm like, God, it wouldn't have taken that much longer to just focus on the conspiracy video. I definitely feel like Shane is losing touch with the casual frequent upload style that makes video blogs effective for an audience. Like if you're only dropping one boring vlog per like quarter, that's not going to be enough. Like, cause people only really get to know you through boring afternoons. If it's like a daily repeating ritual, not if it's the scraps you throw them and then you spend the rest of your time shopping for tacky sh so whatever, do your podcast. That's gonna probably suck too. Let me know what you all think in the comments below of Shane's new sort of content that feels oh so familiar. Also make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see any clip breakdowns on other Shane Dawson or influencer content. But most importantly, if you're new here, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications. If you always wanna be the first to know when we've got a hot and ready pizza for you. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive bonus episodes and virtual watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for solving the conspiracy of the poor quality vlogs with me today. I will see you next time.